everyone, back again. I hope you enjoyed the video of the Labrador's eyes looking adoringly at the owner. And here he or she, of course, is. I um, hope you can see that clearly. Let's see. Rather cute, I think. That was a video for tier two. And of course, as promised, I am completing the rest of this little dog's face um, for tiers three and four. So I've been working dry, but of course working dry on a lovely crystal is, is worthwhile. Uh, you don't really wear out the burrs, especially on something like this, which is not uh, too deep and hectic. I'm only doing some surface engraving and uh, good quality, nice sharp burrs and you're going to get a, a lovely uh, effect. Especially uh, with the rat's tail nicely sharpened and for the final hairs that I do prefer to work dry anyway. So I think, well you can see that with, with the little hairs around his eyes. I have had to be careful because it's a very curved glass. I wanted to keep the artwork large so that you can see the eyes nice and clearly and what I was doing on them. So I have stretched it a little bit. When I say stretched it, uh, pushed the boat out really uh, as to the width of the animal because really he's starting to distort by going around the glass and you don't really want that. So stopped at that size. I think we'll get away with it. I think that will be fine. Uh, you certainly don't want any wider than that. You can see from the other side, uh, it'll be fine. Something like this, actually, you can put um, a name on the front, for example, and you have the dog on the other side. And that is quite an effective, beautiful present for somebody. And uh, actually, it almost looks, just looking at this doggy, it's, it's like he's looking at your name. <laughs> That's quite cute. Oh, what a soppy old me. Anyway, uh, I wish we had a dog. I do miss having a dog. I think they are just wonderful. But we're both golfers, and so we like to close the door and just go and play golf and not worry. I, I wouldn't like to be leaving a, a, a dog at home anymore I, I i just don't like it so anyway i think that i probably will be completing this dry i might use some water but uh because it's surface engraved nice and soft glass nice new, new burrs uh will complete it dry and uh not putting the rest of the body on though there's nothing stopping you sort of extending it down to the bottom of the glass, but I'm just leaving it as the head, um, the sort of face, focusing on the eyes. Um, and that's what you're going to mainly see when you look at this glass. So without further ado, let's proceed. Enjoy. Right, so we have got our little glass with the eyes done. Um, that was obviously in the previous video. And it's nestled nicely in its glass holder with the light behind and the dark background so that we can see what's going on. Um, as you will have seen in the previous video, we've already outlined as well uh, with a white Arkansas. And now I've got a white Arkansas in the drill and I am focusing on the nose. Now, for some reason, I've decided to change the burr. It's still a white Arkansas, but it is a small round burr. And probably because this little nose has a texture. And this little burr will, if you go just round and round, it produces little bits of movement in the glass now with the magic of video, in a microsecond, I changed to a small green stone, which has, in my opinion, the texture of sandblasting. It's, it's a slightly uh, smoother 
than diamond and it's it's quite a useful little stone so I'm actually going quite lightly here I'm not chewing into the glass I'm just gently producing um, a little half tone over the top of what I have done and also over the top of the the darkest areas the holes in the nostrils uh, very very lightly This we will polish out later, but all I'm doing is making marks on the surface just very softly with that green stone. Now I'm back to the white Arkansas. And you can see the difference. That has just chewed nicely into it, really polished, polished it. Well, it's a pre-polisher, so it's a pre-polishing um, tone. And it's just darkening that area a little bit which we will later darken with the rubber anyway I'm just trying to get some of the details right here referring to the picture all the time of course You can, of course, put your um, image behind the glass again. If you're worried about positioning of things, you can always put it behind the glass and wet the engraving in the hopes of being able to see a little bit clearer and then engrave, um, sort of tracing the picture. Sometimes it's a little bit distorted, but if you can, if it just helps you position something, um, then it's useful. It's not too bad if you've already polished areas, then they are much darker. But when it's it's very bright engraving, even when it's wet, you will struggle to see um, what's behind there. But sometimes you can, and and that does help sometimes. But I'm just I'm just using my eyes and visually um, filling this in now. I mean, the main details I've got already, which I had traced on, as you can see, the main lines. White Arkansas, just putting very gentle tones in the darkest areas. It now, at this stage, looks... Um, quite negative and of course we will completely reverse that by the end of this video what am I searching for it's always a intriguing Right, I have got a diamond, and I would imagine it's quite a rough um, diamond. Rough in texture, and I'm working dry. Um, as I explained before, for this video, we're working dry. And you can see that munching into the glass quite, quite easily. I have got my mask on, as you know, and as you should have. Uh, I don't think I've started my dust extractor yet, but I do get up and turn it on at some point. So what I'm doing is using the smaller burr because I'll, I want to be relatively pre precise with some of these areas. Um, adding the lightest areas I'm looking at at the picture. Now, okay, <laughs> I'm pointing at that because I want to point something out to you, and that is I am taking the white Arkansas and going over these little um, holes again and going slightly deeper, um, probably making them a little bigger than real life at the moment. But then you will see now 
Now, do I polish them out first or not? It looks like I'm going to polish them out quickly as well. Yes, yeah, so I've got a little, I've got a little rubber going on here, so I'm just going to quickly polish those out. Doesn't take long at all. And while we've got the burr, I'm just adding a few darker details to his nostrils. Right, back to that diamond burr. And I am very likely just rubbing, running the burr over the dots. I'm not going around them. I'm running it over. And you will see they are now appearing smaller. And that is because they are deeper. And this diamond will chew into the edges of them slightly. But not right to the bottom of them. So then they now appear smaller and they're quite neat and um, I just find that quite efficient. I think I could have made my, made my little lines of dots a little bit neater, quite frankly. <laughs> but uh, anyway. So you already see a little face building up here. It's quite magical. Now, as I've mentioned before, we're going in, apart from that shine on the nose, we're going in the direction of the hair growth. Uh, there's a little lump on the nose there I've just noticed in the picture, so I've added it in. There's much shorter hair on the top of the nose. Um, so much shorter you actually hardly really notice it. Um, well, certainly in this, in this dog it seems to be shorter. Right, so out with the big boy. Large diamond burr and I'm holding it on its side um, and I am in the direction of the hair slowly filling in the area obviously it's much larger so I can go more efficiently more quickly it's brighter because it's pretty rough when I say rough it is making the glass rough and catching the glass but it is not a chippy kind of roughness. You will get to know these things as you're going along. You will see the difference. I'm referring to the picture and Again, just where I see the brightest patches. And this is a, a very light coloured animal, but there are obviously areas of slight shading where there are like dents in the face, the bone structure changes, and um, those areas are slightly duller. But on the brightest areas, I'm using this burr. Or where it's a smaller area, use a smaller burr. But I do like this burr, I must admit. <laughs> Gets the job done.
turning the glass to get more comfortable. If you're worried about going over the edges, it doesn't really matter in this case because we will be going over the edges with various burrs. But you can always use a smaller one as you get nearer the line because obviously this this burr is pretty large. I now have a green stone, it's a sort of smaller one and I find the smaller ones for some reason on, you know, they're not as rough as the big green stone. If you get a big green stone it's almost as rough as the big diamond I've just used and so it's really strange. But anyway, um, this is a really nice burr, I've had it for a long time, I couldn't even tell you what the original shape of it was but when if it does go uh, a little bit rough um, I run it against a, a white stone and I find a smoother area again and it, it generally as I say these little the smaller green stones have the effect of sandblasting which I'm quite happy about because when I am sandblasting and I miss a tiny patch, I can quite successfully use this burr to fill it in if I can't be bothered to dive into the sandblaster again. <laughs> it's a slightly half toned. Now you won't be able to see I can just about see that where I have gone over with this green stone it is slightly smoother and therefore slightly duller and I will then be polishing it further with rubbers and because it's already slightly pre-polished it is more efficient and it's going to be darker. As I said in the previous video, the image of the dog, he's leaning his head onto a table. Um, but I am leaving that whole area out and I'm just using the face for this. Right, we're back to White Lock, Kansas. Sort of a longer shape. And I am... Um, going over any areas of clear glass that are the darkest areas and blending them in. This is the sort of folds of ear. This little doggy's ears are down. Hope he's not too sad. So any trouble along the edges is very easily sorted out with a burr like this.
I'm really procrastinating. Come on, Liz, get on with it. I'm going over the areas that have already had the green stone and you can see it's quite effective how it's producing a slightly darker tone without being too dark. And with the effects of hair. If I wanted to make um, them more hair like, more strandy, I mean, they're not too bad at the moment, but I'm not really going for that particularly at the moment. But you can flatten the top of the spur and it will produce a much sharper line. And I'm quite happy with the lines that it is producing at the moment. It's interesting how these half tones just bring that flat, flat face to a more contoured shape. With a bit of practice, you build up more confidence in copying what you are looking at. It's not that difficult. You can do it, but it really helps and it is absolutely not cheating to trace the main details first. In fact, I think it's absolutely vital, you know, just to get the eyes, the nose, the mouth, all in the right places, the right proportion, the right angles, the right perspective. Otherwise, it really can look like a Picasso, unless you really want it to. <laughs> but um, I think it it makes it a far more professional looking finish. And my, as my my art teacher, when I left, um, well, no, I was doing my A level art, and my A level. Um, art teacher at the little art college um, in Harare in Zimbabwe and he used to say there is no such thing as cheating in art and I've probably told you this before several times and I'll tell you again no such thing as cheating unless you're doing copyright you're not allowed to do copyright um, if something is copyrighted, cartoons and that, don't do it. Just don't do it. Certainly not to sell. That's, that's the crunch line. Don't engrave a copyrighted picture to sell. Um, but he used to do the most amazing portraits. And he used to use an overhead projector and project the portrait image onto the canvas. So here we have a grey rubber, soft rubber, and you can use whatever rubber you've got, uh, just the softest one that you've got for the moment. I am going over the darkest areas Now I've noticed that there's a little white line where there should be a dark line. And that, of course, is what we did initially. We outlined everything with the white our canvas, but this one has just got a little mark. And so I'm going over it again with the white our canvas. And what that's done is removed the, the little 
white mark that that particular burr has left. It's, it's something you'll get used to. They do leave funny little marks. And now it is very easily polished away. It's important that you get these shades right um, because obviously that part of his his face and mouth there is a dent. Now I've got a white or canvas again but a different shape. This one is, is just a lot sharper and so I am adding in the finishing shape. The cl it, it needs to be a little bit closer that middle bit. There we go, that's better. Much better. As I've said before, my hands are very dry the old cliche can't use hand cream when you're engraving glass here I've got my soft gray rubber again which I am using just with my hands as I often do especially when I want a gentle gentle bit of polishing Probably not showing up that well in this video, but it is doing, <laughs> I promise you, uh, there is a slight effect. It's when I want something really subtle. Quite a clever burr. You can, if you if you make a mark on the glass, in the middle of nowhere, you will see it. Yeah, look at that. And one thing that gives it that three D effect as well is the fact that I haven't got white outlines. This is often um, something that you know beginners especially will will do is outline and that flattens the whole picture uh, there's only one time that there is an outline around anything and that is if there is a, the sunshine behind it for example and say it's got a little hairy back like the back like a bee which has got lots of little hairs and it has a very shiny little outline because the hairs are picking up the sunlight. Then it's different. But in general, something like this dog would not have a white outline. So by putting a, a softer tone around the edge, it just molds it a bit. Here I have got my um, rat's tail. A nice sharp rat's tail and I'm adding in some little hairy details getting those hairs in the right direction they've already been helped by the fact that I have prepared the background canvas with burr action going in the right direction so the basics are already there and then just adding little hairs. It's quite amazing. They really do stand out, even though they are the almost the same color, if you like. Um, they're the same tone of white as the big burr we used to fill in that area. But because they are fine and deeper, they do show up. 
you can see the hair. And then it, it really is quite an interesting look. So the usual thing, flick up into the dark, flick down into the dark, and it gives the impression that the dark hair is flicking down and up. As I'm watching this, I'm looking and I'm thinking, poor little doggy, I'm covering his nose, he can't breathe. <laughs> oh, sweet man. So we're mainly doing the hairs within the face at the moment. But as you come down to the edges, you can flick it very, very gently over the edges to produce a tiny, tiny little hair. So you, you start in the area and then flick out. So only the last tiny bit of the the movement is what goes over the edge. You can take as long as you like over this. I really like to add a lot of hair. suppose it also depends on your mood mood and um <laughs> i don't know sometimes you can give the impression of his if you really don't feel like it but it's it's always worthwhile especially if it is an animal that is very hairy then you don't want it to look in patches like it's like it's bald um You've got to make the time. You can also take um, at any point along the way, take it a tiny um, white or Kansas, flatten the top and add more little individual hairs, dark hairs. But because this animal is really quite light, there were not many dark hairs showing, not very many dark areas showing. Um, so I, I'm not doing that today, but as I say, you can make very fine hairs quite easily with a white or Kansas, really dark hairs. So here you can see I'm gently adding a few of these little whiskery bits on the edge.
I went around and added a few more. And there you have a lovely little doggy's face. <laughs> With my signature, of course, you must add your signature. And probably the year. I always put my signature and the year. All done. A lovely little dog's face looking dreamily up at you. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. Till next time. Bye bye.